Hey folks, David Stewart here. We're gonna talk a little bit about Berserk today, but not this normal sized manga, which you may have seen before, but this guy right here, the Berserk Deluxe Edition, so mighty, just like Guts' sword, it barely fits in the frame of my document camera here. This is quite a behemoth, just to show you how big it is. It is big and thick, like you're buying a Stephen King book. It is uh, just over, let's see here, just over, or just shy of 700 pages of art. And it is much bigger than the normal manga volumes, if you wanna see. So all the artwork and everything has been significantly sized up for this collection. This is the first three manga volumes collected into one. Um, and uh, I really am pretty pleased with this product and I'd like to give you a look inside and talk a little bit about it. If you're not familiar with Berserk or you've never seen any of the anime, um, it's a manga by uh, Kintaro Mira and it's been running a long time. I think it actually started like way back in 1990 or 1989 uh, and it's been localized in English for quite a while now and I collected it back uh, when I was in university and really really liked the story especially what's called the golden age arc which runs up through about volume 14 here this is the first volume which is really uh, with the first three mangas here is focused on the introduction to the main character guts the setting which it focuses on the European fantasy uh, style or setting and uh, the art style and uh, narrative style of uh, Kintaro uh, Mira sets up the main conflict and then you'd actually have a little time skip going back in time to what people really love um, fans almost universally adore the golden age arc the first however many mangas uh, up to volume 14 first 13 mangas or so uh, so let's take a look at what's inside and you'll have an idea of whether or not you want to get this. First of all, I do like the binding. Uh, as you can see, I like these bright red letters. It did come with a uh, extra piece of paper here that was on the back when it was shrink wrapped. Uh, have you got the guts? Um, of course that comes off and I just stow it in the back for safekeeping because it's part of the collection. This Dark Horse um, graphic novel um, UPC code is removable, but I leave those things on. The parental advisory sticker is removable, but I usually choose to leave those things on. And uh, let's take a look. And it has the brand, of course, on the cover, kind of inset into this faux leather. Um, I really like the embossing work on it. It's great, highly reflective, and I don't feel like that's gonna just wear off uh, quickly at all. Um, so take a look at inside, and the first thing you'll notice is that you don't have these full color photos to introduce the volumes. What you have are the title pages. Uh, and you do have an updated table of contents that will show you um, you know, where everything is in the new volume. But what you do get, if you wanna see those, those full, color, um, full color covers, those are contained at the back of the book. There's all three full color photos, um, volume three, volume two, and volume one, respectively. Now, I will say, just to, just to show you, that um, this series did develop over time as far as Kintaro's style, um, his technical ability to execute and draw the character. Just to compare, here's volume 14 after he completed the Golden Age arc, and you can see a big difference in the way that Guts is portrayed, as well as the detail on the cover. Um, the use of colors on the cover, this is something like pastels or even like colored pencils is what it, is what it looks like, and this we've moved to a more painted style, which um, produces a lot better contrast in general. Also, uh, moving away from the white background, which which was used, I think, in a lot of these types of, of books back in the late 80s and early 90s. So um, by the time you get here, you can see that his style has developed quite a bit, but it is really nice that they included the full color plates without any of the, the title text covering it up. It's just the cover art without the text, um, which I thought was a a good little addition. So let's head back towards the beginning and you can see some of the art. The art is not on a shiny page. I mean, hopefully you can see this with this light, but um, this is on a normal page with a normal amount of luminosity. It's not reflective like magazine paper. The stock is thick. This stock is very substantial. It feels good in your hands. Um, it doesn't feel cheap at all. If you compare that to the manga, I'm hoping you guys can see this here. Um, hopefully you can see this manga is a couple years old um, 
and you can see that there's some significant yellowing of the older pages. Now, I don't know if these new pages are gonna yellow as significantly as these, but these definitely have yellowed. The, the pages are, are quality because Dark Horse Manga doesn't really put out garbage as far as like the paper stock goes, but they have a much rougher and more pulpy feel compared to these. These have a just a much better feel. It's a nice heavyweight quality stock that they printed this book on. Um, I'm very, very pleased with it and it makes the art look very sharp, very easy to see all the details. You could go either way on this and I've had discussions with artists um, on the channel in fact as to whether it's really the best thing to have better paper for graphic art because there is an aesthetic value to this softer, rougher paper, which is that it produces kind of softer textures, it softens some of the lines. And um, with this high quality stock, the lines are very sharp and very detailed and very easy to see, plus it's sized up. I think, however, it's a virtue for Kintaro's art. Um, he draws with a almost Baroque level of detail at times, and I think that that benefits a higher quality printing. Um, if Jesse White, who's a, who's a friend of the channel, if he were on, um, he might say that you know, Kintaro does quite a bit of noodling, but as I'm looking at this again, I realize he does far less hatching work to cover up mistakes. Um, there's, you know, there's little mistakes here and there with, with like maybe the presentation of a, um, of a character or something, uh, but he doesn't do a lot of noodling. There's a lot of spaces of white and that harsh black, which I think works well. Uh, as well as using gray shades and things like that to, to fully detail what he's doing. You can see, if you're not familiar with Berserk, it is infamous for its extreme level of violence and gore, as well as the, the very, very interesting character. And he's one of the one of the comics that's most responsible for like giant swords. Here's his like Grand Marshal's Claymore is modeled after Guts' sword in Berserk. Um, so if you're looking for like giant sword anime, this is, you know, this is definitely a big influence, I think, on having giant swords in a lot of this kind of media. Um, it's just great. It was much too big to be called a sword. Massive, thick, heavy, and far too rough. Indeed, it was like a heap of raw iron. What I do appreciate also about the setting, this is the same with the original manga, is that when they did the English, rather than leaving all the Japanese characters in there or trying to paste over them, um, they went to the original art and re-lettered a lot of these panels. So the panels actually look much better than they do in, in some mangas where they just kind of try to paste over the Japanese characters. And with the, say, the sound effects, they give you a little subtitle, WAM, um, and just leave the, the original Japanese characters there. And it just has a great look throughout. So I'm a big fan of this. Now, this is the earliest stuff. And one of the things you'll notice is that his style, as I did mention, his style developed quite a bit as things went on. So the original versions of Guts that you see in this aren't uh, bad by any stretch to me, but we can see that the presentation of how he ends up looking is significantly different and I think better by the time we return to the present condition in volume 14. It's a little harder to see because it's so much smaller than this huge art but I think it does improve quite a bit. Um, and the big presentation, I think, you know, let's find a, I think I bookmarked a good one. Another thing, it comes with a bookmark, you know, look at, it's almost like an art book in some places, just how extreme the level of detail and how good the presentation is for some of his art. And this is his early stuff. He got better as he went. And not only that, he gets better as these volumes progress. So. The, the intro to the character, which is a very short two-page intro that introduces you to the setting and the character, and I'll talk about that, I'll do an analysis of that separately, um, is just, it, it's orders of magnitude better by the time he gets to the end of the third volume and begins the Golden Age arc. He did quite a bit of improvement with his craft. He got quite a bit better at the forms, uh, especially proportions with Guts' hands and everything as time goes on. Uh, he just did a really great job of it. Um, as he continued to develop his craft. So I do appreciate that. Now, let me talk a little bit about pricing and stuff like that because this thing was $32 when I bought it. And for $32, I actually felt like I was getting a really good, very good value for a graphic novel because for 32 bucks, it's really rare to get 700 pages of graphic novel with this quality of presentation, this big, with this binding. 
it's actually really good value. Not only that, but if you just compare to buying the floppies, the original uh, manga, these usually run about $15 a piece. And so this contains the first three, and if you're buying these new, um, $15 times three is 45, and this is 32, you're saving $13 by buying the much better presentation. And one of the reasons I bought this is I actually don't have the first three volumes. The first three volumes um, were owned by my roommate, and I liked it so much that I bought volume four on and just let him read him because he was really into him too. And I think I just had more disposable income at the time. Um, so I, you know, I went and bought all the all the floppies. And so I don't know if I'll continue buying this at $32 a pop, but considering how good the presentation is, there's a very good chance I might because I think this is gonna last longer. I think it's something that I can keep forever and read, you know, years down the road if I want to, or um, you know, pass off to a friend if he really wants to experience this in the best possible way. This is how I would I would say you have to experience it is in this big volume. I also like the fact that they included enough gutter on every page that you never are losing any of the art. Um, only when you have something where the art runs all the way into the gutter would you lose any of it, but, but the design is there to allow for that. So even though it's a big, thick binding, you don't get anything where you get with some comics where they're kind of, you're losing some of the page in the folds of a large, thick graphic novel. Um, even with something like this, the, the gutter really, it just goes away. The, the binding's so nice, everything flattens out a lot. So in general, I think this is a great product and um, I would recommend it to anyone that's a fan of this or is looking to get into collecting Berserk because of the value and because of the quality presentation. It is one of my favorite, um, it's one of my favorite things. And so it's great to go back and read it again. And uh, so anyway, let me know what you think about Berserk down below in the comments and what you maybe are thinking about these deluxe editions. Uh, I think they're great and um, I hope you'll think so too. If you're interested in some of my books, uh, here's one, Muramasa Blood Drinker, um, which is, you know, takes place in feudal Japan. So a lot of people tend to like that one. Newest one is technically Voices of the Void. And if you're seeing this, you may still be able to get Voices of the Void for free. Um, it may still be free on Amazon. If not, it's usually 99 cents. And make sure you join in my mailing list and uh, you might get a free copy of that. This is what I call Aliens Meets Lovecraft. And I have a new book coming out on November 1st called City of Silver that is in the European fantasy tradition. So if you like European fantasy, which is berserk, even though it's drawn by um, you know a Japanese man, um, you might like, of course, other European fantasy things, including my book. So thanks so much, and I will see you guys next time.